been with one of my guests today, and I try to be polite to whomever is on the show. Uh, this is a man named Louis C.K., and he stars in a new HBO sitcom called Lucky Louie. Okay, over the weekend, I watched two of his shows. You watched yes, it, and you watched parts of yeah. it. I have a sense of humor. I'm probably going to make this show much more popular by saying this. I found them unbelievably vulgar. They're pretty raunchy. And racist. I'm used to the F word. That doesn't bother me. I think I have a sense of humor. But, I mean, it's got him for endlessly having intercourse with his wife while she's so bored. It shows the neighbors moaning. There's a vibrator that's shaking. Yes. It, it, there's also racist it things. It goes there. And I just thought, I'm sure he's a lovely man. In a few minutes, I have to face him. But... <laughs> No, but it honest. makes you wonder. And you know, the thing is, is there it no is, boundary? I, I no. guess not on HBO. I always no, joke about it, calling it hilarious but offensive, because that's <laughs> what I think it is. <laughs> As you heard earlier, the new sitcom Lucky Louie is definitely a hot topic, causing a firestorm of controversy that has some critics calling the show sexist and racist. And it's definitely a show that's not above going below the belt. Take a look. Kim, we can't afford another baby. But we always said we'd have two kids. We agreed when we had Lucy that we wouldn't make her be alone. Yeah, but not now. Do you know how much we have in checking right now? Negative $50. <laughs> we, we have to raise 50 bucks to be broke. <laughs> care. I'm not waiting. Lucy is four already. I'm getting pregnant right now. Well, you ain't getting pregnant without my sperm. <laughs> that is not your sperm. That is our sperm. That's my sperm. Get it back. <laughs> Please welcome the creator and star of Lucky Louie, Louis C.K. <laughs> that was a fun That was a fun thing. Now, I have just made it so popular oh, yes, by telling you. everybody all these <laughs> raunchy scenes, right? Well... You can thank her by having her uh, as a guest on oh, the, on the oh, sure. episode, maybe. <laughs> no, listen, I'm really glad that you said this stuff because, because... Well, because I think a lot of people, you know, are confused by the show and offended by it, so mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's good to You're be... Yeah, because... I'm a little you... nervous and scared, well. but... But I'm glad to be able to talk to you about what it. You you, you, what do you You've I, actually said it's I, like I, honeymooners, I, sort of, right? Yeah, the show is not. I mean, I don't want people to think that we're trying to make fun of folks and we're being dirty just for the sake of it. We're just trying to be as honest as possible. And we picked HBO so that people would know True. when they go there That's that it's right. a place where, you know. But at the same time, I know that HBO, once you buy it, it's just part of the flipping. So, you know, but we are. All we're trying to do is be funny right. and, and unique and relatable. And but let me, let me ask you this, humor, though. It's it is. It's very humor. grown up. It is. It can get very yeah. raunchy. What about mm -hmm. the, um, the seven-year-old well, girl? Grown up doesn't who's... bother me. It's, yeah. well, never mind. You and I, will, we'll have lunch. No, and I, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> we'll because, do lunch. No, it really is. Barbara, I, feel, I, I felt the same way watching it, but I, my concern was that there's a seven-year-old girl who plays your daughter on mm -hmm. the show. Does she mm -hmm. hear all the stuff that goes on? Because I know she's not in a lot of the scenes where that talk goes well, on. Well, no, we actually shoot carefully so that she's not on the set when that stuff gets said. You put big earmuffs on her or something? Yeah. She's in the show playing. with us, but we are grown-ups live in the same houses as, as children. Yeah. So, and grown-ups curse, and grown-ups get mad. Listen, at each I other read Natalie Wood's biography. Okay, they mm -hmm. used to let that kid go in water. She was petrified of water. She used to do scenes in water. To me, that's much more dangerous for yeah. a child actor than hearing a then, few then, uh, words. Okay. Uh, then then you know what? I was, I was yes. actually. I remember this one scene where it's your the, your, your character, the daughter's birthday. Yeah. And the African American couple mm -hmm. that's across the hall gives her a doll, mm -hmm. her other friends gave her a doll, right. and the African-American couple gives her a black doll. That's right. And she has to do a scene, and she does it very effectively, where she cries and says, I don't want the black Barbie. Right. Is there conversation with this young actress about what the ramifications of that are? Because I know that those are the things mm -hmm. that moms, Elizabeth and I were just talking yeah. about. Sure. Well, I think that, like, for that scene, yeah, first somebody gives her a white Barbie, yes. and my wife is upset because she doesn't like Barbies because exactly. of what they represent for women. They said a little mini stripper. I thought yeah. it was a great line. It yeah. was. Mm -hmm. It was funny. And then she gets a black Barbie, and some kids just say stuff that you don't know why they're going to like something. Exactly, like but it. it was real. It was a real reaction. It, it wasn't a bad real. reaction as a kid. For the kid responded. to say, I don't like the black Barbie, and then we all feel horrible. Because you're embarrassed you because this yes. couple is there. Exactly. Yeah. So I think well. we let the kid absorb that the way the kid would in the real story, which is okay. you don't like this Barbie and you just, you know. Right. Yeah. But I, well, don't no, think I, they, I think at this age the kid's six years old and we don't need to 
I, I don't want her to be race conscious or anything conscious. Right. It's not up to me, though. I think it's up to her parents. Speaking of that. I hope the six-year-old doesn't see the vibrating, the red vibrating moving when she's on the screen. <laughs> yeah. No, the Just keep her bed. locked up in somewhere else. Yeah. I just thought I'd throw I that in. Into the real, yeah. real world. No, and as far as the, the race material on the show, the, the pilot sets up a situation which is real from my life, which mm -hmm. is that we are raising my daughter in upstate New York. And there are zero anything but white people up there where we are. And so uh, an African- Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and a, a guy came to fix the refrigerator, and he was African-American, and, uh, and my daughter bonded with him. And uh, he said- This is in the show. This is true, yeah. and it really happened. True life. And my daughter saw, said, refrigerator because she had just learned the word. And he said, yes, refrigerator. And they said refrigerator to each other all day. Uh -huh. And then I took her to New York City, and the first black guy that she saw, she said, refrigerator. <laughs> I did, I did and so right away, that, I thought, my daughter doesn't have enough buried funny. experience. Say, mm -hmm. That's cute. Well, That's it was cute. true. And so yeah. this is the thing. In order yeah. for, for our next generation to mix and not think of each other in terms of you're race, right. mm -hmm. adults have to have these awkward, hi, please be yes. my friend because you're black mm -hmm. things. It's just awkward, yeah, but it's... Right. But it's Just tell her really when she with. sees a chubby auntie star, don't say refrigerator. No. <laughs> <laughs> she also likes to play. Say you do say to the, you know, I, I have no black friends, so please be my friend just because you're black. You I do. do. Say that, I yeah. do, and yeah. that's the way I guess. That's the way, I mean, that's not true in my life. You know, a friend of mine, uh, Chris Rock is a friend of mine, yes, and he yeah. lives in a nice neighborhood, and he's got um, a daughter, and he's, he has trouble finding black friends for her, and yeah. for his black daughter, because yeah. he's in an area that's so, so it's something that we're all dealing well, we with. we take and care you, of that. You do take those situations <laughs> yeah. and make them real. Doesn't your daughter, she, you have your, your four-year-old, and mm -hmm. she, that, um, doesn't she like to play hide-and-seek hide and, and you hate it? Oh, yeah, well, it, I, she loves playing hide-and-seek, and I guess I find it annoying because uh, she's awful at it. <laughs> like, when we play hide-and-seek, she tells me where to hide. She picks my hiding place, <laughs> which is patently unfair. She's yeah, like, hide is. in the closet. And I'm like, but then you know, hide in the closet! You know, so <laughs> I got to go How in the closet. How does your family feel about exposing them like this? Dad, did, I mean, we all My know. wife loves the show, and yeah. my daughters don't watch the show. Most of the show <laughs> is based on, on your relationship with... Yes, it is. Yeah, the four-year-old you love and found interesting, the one-year-old you think is, what, a lump? Well, the one-year-old, <laughs> I don't know nothing about her because she hasn't said anything yet. <laughs> so there's nothing to really say. Are you concerned? It's how baby. good you are as a dad? Oh, I'm the Father's a Day we just finished with now. Yes, well, I think I'm a pretty awful dad. Um, and I think most fathers feel that way, yeah. that you're constantly... One time I was eating chocolates I wasn't supposed to be eating, and my daughter said, what are those? And I said, they're black tomatoes. Because I didn't want her to think I was eating. Oh, so now she thinks there's something called black tomatoes. That is so wrong. Isn't that awesome? That's so wrong it's awful. I think that's great. And you know that one-year-old, if she's anything like you, she's going to have a ton to say. Because you are I very funny. So. And oh, the show you. is very interesting. So you can watch it or not. It's up to you. Thanks to Louis C.K. When Lucky Louis was coming out and I was promoting it, I asked to do the view. And then I showed up and uh, uh, the other guest was uh, Fonzie, um, <laughs> Henry Winkler. And I mean, for me, it was just being there, I was like Barbara Walters. I grew up and she was like Barbara Wawa and she was, uh, you know, <laughs> the center of so much uh, going on and Arafat and all this stuff, you know. And then Fonzie. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. I was in, uh, you know, like fourth grade, third grade when Fonzie was just the, uh, the fucking king of the world to me. So here he is, you know, a little weird, not at all Fonzie. Uh, you know, hi. Yeah. You know, it's not Fonzie. Like, oh, hi. Oh, that's nice. Like, it's not how Fonzie talks. And, uh, but he's a great guy, yeah. and he knows uh, Pamela Adlon, who played my wife on Lucky Louie. So he actually came over to my dressing room to say, oh, I love Pamela, and I love the show. It's dear. Your show is dear. That's what he said. It's so dear. And I, and I was so, that was great. And then, and then, uh, and then I'm, uh, all of a sudden a producer comes in my room and says, I have to talk to you. Uh, the, we're, they're about to go in the air, you need to see this. And her, her hand was shaking on this remote. She turned on the, the TV on my, this is li it's on live. And, and there's Barbara Walters saying, uh, um, our first topic is about uh, one of our guests uh, who has a show called Lucky Louie. And uh, this is the, the most offensive, racist, <laughs> sexist, <laughs> terrible show I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe this is on the air. I hate it. And they all started going to town on that there's pictures of me and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and uh, I got to go out there. Yeah. And uh, so she said, uh, so we still want to try to do your funny stories. I'm like, no, I can't do the funny stories. You're fucking killing me out there. And I was shaking. 
Um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle it. I think I called Chris Rock, uh, mm-hmm. who's like an advisor to me, and <laughs> I told him. Backstage? Was I was backstage, and I called Chris Rock and this said. This was the best show ever, by the way. Yeah, it was <laughs> great. And I said, I don't know what to do. These women just shit all over me, and, uh, and uh, they're, they're, I'm about to go out there. And he said, uh, don't, def- forget the women. You've got people who are watching on, at home. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, just rise above it and uh, talk to the audience. For, fuck Bar- Bart Walters. She doesn't matter. You're going to be on television right now. Nobody's even going to notice what show it is. It's just going to see you. And that was a, a wake me up. I went out there and, and I thought, I'm not talking to Barbara Walters. Her audience is more important than she is to me. <laughs> and, uh, and I love those ladies. And I know they'll like me. And, uh, and also, they showed a clip, right before they brought me out, they showed a clip from the show of me and my wife arguing about money in bed. Which is, to me, what marriage is. Mm-hmm. Arguing about money instead of fucking. <laughs> and, um, and the clip really worked. And the audience laughed, and I thought, fuck her, I don't need her. And I went out there, and she made a big deal out of, Bar Waltz came over and hugged me when I first walked out. Like, oh, uh, we're friends now. Like, oh, the rift is over. And when she did that, I realized, this is pure bullshit. She doesn't m- dislike the show, she wasn't offended, she's trying to get on the map. She's trying to make it into something. And also the Republican, to, oh, I forget her name, <laughs> on the other side, said something about the, the, uh, this show has touched off a firestorm of controversy. We were on the air for like a week. It hadn't touched off anything. <laughs> there was nothing. They were trying to, let's touch off this firestorm of controversy right now. So uh, it just, then I realized that it's all false. Nobody was really mad at me. And then I just explained the show to the, audi- to the audience. I knew they wanted me to come out and go, fuck you. That's what they wanted. That's right. why they sandbagged me, because they hoped I would misbehave. They thought I would come on and say, fuck yeah. you, you old bag. And she'd go, oh my goodness. And it would be all over the place. <laughs> but instead I came out and said, listen, I, I thank you for bringing up these concerns, because I, <laughs> I don't want people to think the show's here to offend anyone. It's just honest. And I went through the points of the show and why why it was important to me.